Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And this morning, I'm on the Appalachian Trail here in the state of Virginia in Shenandoah National Park. It's early in the morning and I just can't help but to bring up the topic of the American chestnut. The American chestnut is best known as today as a tree that suffered the most devastating loss in forest history. This tree survived for 40 million years and was eliminated by a blight in a mere 40. 40 billion chestnut trees disappeared within 40 years. They're best known across the Appalachian Mountains for the amazing wood and chestnuts that they would produce each year. So today I'm going to talk about the American chestnut, what happened to these trees, historically how they're important, especially to the people that lived here in the Appalachian Mountains, which was their really their very native home range. And to show you as well, an amazing American chestnut tree that exists on my property that's over 12 inches in diameter and must have some amazing, amazing genetics or genes. So this is American chestnut. It's sprouting up from rootstock. It is tree that's considered to be functionally extinct but the uh, sprouts keep coming up from the roots of this tree the, that grew here probably over a hundred years ago. So this tree keeps coming up from this root stock that's underground. It grows some and then a blight hits it. And I'll explain the story of these trees. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And here's the make this basic. It's like dog. dog woods are flowering. So I don't have my fancy camera here with me and I don't have a stick to put my camera on. So I'm holding it in my hand. You know me, I'm pretty passionate about what I do and teaching about nature. And I'm just really excited to share with you my observations here about the American chestnut tree. And let, let me turn the camera around and show you exactly what we're looking at here. So this is an American chestnut survivor. They have these, these long kind of pointed leaves with points on the end. What we're seeing here are multiple stems coming up from the same rootstock. The original tree probably grew 100 or 150 years ago. And it's remarkable that the roots are still alive and can continue to set up root sprouts. Some trees are very prolific about sprouting from the base of roots. For example, the tulip poplars that are in my, on my property, of which I built the cabin from, that you see here. And if you look at these trees, this forest was clear cut about 35 to 40 years ago and these tulip poplars that are coming up are about 40 years old now and you can see they're sprouting up from the rootstock this is a diseased black locust i cut off the top of it and you can see that on this black locust this is another tree that will produce shoots from their rootstock so this American chestnut tree is doing the same as these other trees. What we see here is a younger tree right here and behind it an older tree. So this older tree here is dead and killed by the blight. This younger tree is still struggling and eventually will get killed by the blight as well. Years before, you can see this piece right here this grew up from the rootstock. So this is the oldest one. This is the next oldest one. And this is the current one. And they just keep coming up and the blight attacks them from the ground level up. The blight does not function below ground level. And so here in the Appalachian Mountains on the Appalachian Trail, we see multiple trees that look like this. The tree is still struggling to come back. 
So I'm back hiking up the trail. Just amazed at the multiple chestnut trees that I'm seeing along here. And remember that this tree is now functionally extinct. While it keeps sprouting from the rootstocks, the blight kills 99.9% .9 of these before they can flower and produce seeds. I have to respect and I'm amazed by the vigorous fight left in these trees, how they keep sprouting up and growing and then dying back again. Just a remarkable thing to witness. I'm going to continue this episode from my backyard with a remarkable, remarkable 12 inch diameter, 50 to 60 feet tall survivor American chestnut tree. Truly remarkable specimen. So I'm back here at my house and right here on my land is the biggest American chestnut tree I've ever seen. It's 12 inches, a good 12 inches in diameter. It's 50 or 60 feet tall and it has produced American chestnuts. I've been in contact with the American Chestnut Foundation and told them about this tree. They're interested in getting some nuts from me and they're also interested when the tree flowers to collect gametes uh, from the flowers themselves. So what caused four billion trees that covered 200 million acres to disappear in 40 years? Well, it's the chestnut blight. It was brought here from Asia on a shipment of Asian chestnut trees that were brought to a herbarium at the Bronx Zoo. And it was first noticed that trees at the Bronx Zoo were dying and it quickly spread across the country at an incredible rate. There have been other blights that have harmed many other different trees, but there's never been a blight so total that gave such total destruction as this blight that left virtually no survivors. Biologists refer to this as the greatest ecological forest disaster to ever strike the planet in world history. It's an incredible, horrible, terrible phenomena. This tree that has been present for 40 million years was destroyed in a mere 40. The blight kills all parts of the tree above the soil. And as you saw on my Appalachian Trail pictures, they keep re-sprouting up from roots that have been underground for 100 years. This tree here is particularly interesting because in, on my 18 acres and the surrounding acreage I've hiked, I've never seen another American chestnut in this area re-sprouting from roots. So this is really the only one. The American chestnut was really, really important to the uh, settlers in the Appalachian Mountains through the 1800s and to early 1900s. The tree produces an enormous quantity of high quality, high nutrient nuts every year. Unlike other tree species, which will sometimes only produce nuts in cycles of every four or five years. The American chestnut produces huge quantities of nuts every year. These nuts could provide people that lived in the Appalachian Mountains with cash once a year because they're able to take these in to stores and markets and sell them. And the Appalachian Mountains were known for shipping out train loads. So Appalachian Mountain people that survived on subsistence farming could collect nuts, gain cash, or even trade for things like shoes, salt, sugar, and things they couldn't grow or produce on their own. The chestnut trees also fed their hogs. They would let hogs run loose in the mountains, reproducing, fattening up, and then they would collect them and slaughter them uh, once every year. Hogs were tagged by notches in the ear to identify ownership, but there were no fences. And so this was similar to the American West where cattle were branded to identify ownership. Here, ownership was identified by notching their ears. These trees were said to care for the people's Appalachian Mountains from cradle to grave. 
and of course there's been cradles made from chestnut wood wood as well as coffins made from chestnut wood the chestnut trees would grow really really large diameter tall and straight with an even grain so it made a great wood for almost anything it was used for sidings on homes it was used for fences the wood was very decay resistant so it made great fence posts railroad ties furniture it burned well it was just an amazing all-around tree in the springtime the trees produced so many flowers that the mountains looked like they were covered with a layer of snow across the treetops and bee farmers and beekeepers loved the honey that was produced while the bees were foraging these flowers. So the loss of these trees was really devastating to the economy and the quality of life of the people here in the Appalachian Mountains. What's being done today? Well, there's basically three prongs of research looking at restoring the American chestnut. One prong of research is looking at finding resistant trees like these and crossing them together with other resistant trees and hopefully wind up with something that is completely resistant to the blight. Another prong of research is crossbreeding the American chestnut with Chinese chestnut trees. And then they're crossbreeding back to take out most of the Chinese genes and leave a American chestnut with mostly American chestnut DNA. The third prong of research has genetically engineered trees that have inserted genes that are resistant to the blight into the tree from another plant. So one day we hope that, that the American chestnuts will be restored. Until then, I'm still watching you know, them re-sprout from their roots and maintain this vigorous attempt to live life I'm excited to have this tree here, and we'll see if uh, it has another year of nut producing in it yet. So I hope you wa enjoyed watching Nature at Your Door and my sharing about the chestnut trees. If you're in the Appalachian Mountains, you're likely to see some of these re-sprouts, so keep an eye out for them. If you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel, give me a like, and I always love hearing from my viewers and try to get back to you as soon as I can if I'm not out hiking or away from the internet. Thanks for watching Nature at Your Tour.